Thank you. Actually, uh, I have to say to my brother, Mohamed Barkindo, thank you very much. I've been really humbled with your generosity over the last few years since I became minister. And from the day one, he was inviting me to attend with the OPEC family, OPEC community. And he gave me this uh, good experience and exposure to know the OPEC from inside and to get to know also other friends there and our, uh, I, would, I would say, our membership to uh, join the uh, OPEC, even OPEC Plus, has always been welcomed and uh, has been renewed to join them anytime. So I thank him for that. And since we had our Egypt since five years ago, my brother Barkindo has been attending each year, giving always uh, either keynote speeches or attending and participating uh, in, in important panels. So we thank you for that. We took the advantage of having His Excellency with us, attending this uh, uh, Egypt Petroleum Show this year, perhaps uh, as a gesture and a sign of, of uh, I would say, uh, admiration and respect and love, since we are having the Valentine's Day today. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're sorry that we spoiled some of your uh, enjoying this evening, but uh, I think being with us is in itself Valentine's Day. So. In this occasion, I would like to thank Ahmed very much for his services. Of course, I cannot talk on behalf of Obed, but at least for countries like ours, where he has always said that the inception of OPEC has been made here in Egypt, in Cairo, at the Yacht Club in Maadi. So we are proud that we have some roots connecting us to uh, OPEC and with a great friend, Mohamed Barkendo, has been able to get us always uh, connected and uh, has always been uh, next to us, attending to our requests and attending and helping us with any information or any data or any needs that we requested from him. Thank you. Wish you all the best, you and your family. Uh, and definitely, we are always together. And uh, we, the beauty of our industry is that we make friends. It's not only about business, but it's about human and feelings and friendship. So thank you for your friendship, my dear brother. And I wish you healthy and uh, a prosperous uh, retirement or New life, inshallah. Thank you very much. Dear friend, uh, a colleague, and a comrade uh, in arms, uh, sometimes cannot be predicted. Um, we had a very good discussion with him today, but he kept this secret. He never told me what he was up to, but. Just listening to him now, I remember he asked me two or three times in his office, make sure you are at the dinner, at the gala dinner. I know you, I know you have friends in Cairo, don't disappear. I said, no, inshallah, I'll be there. But to enjoy the Egyptian hospitality, and almost all my friends, I'm sure, will be there. So now I know why he kept asking me whether I would be here or not. As he told you, 
we have been good friends. We have graduated in the African tradition to become brothers. Since his assumption of office as minister, in my assumption of office in Vienna as Secretary General. And this is the essence of our industry, is friendship across nations, across oceans and continents. Hardly do you find an oil man stranded at any airport or train station in the world. All he needs to do, he or she needs to do, is to pick their iPhone and scroll. You will find the contact of a friend or a colleague in that country. So we are a really blessed industry, a blessed family. And we in OPEC, as we have heard from Tariq, we have our roots here in this great country, the country of the prophets, country of civilizations, the country of Moses, of Abraham, of Jacob, Yusuf, of the pyramids, and the Nile. But it is also home of OPEC and known to many people, including in our industry. I know it's been a long day, but just bear with me. In 1959, this great country hosted the first ever Arab Petroleum Congress, bringing together the industry from across the world to meet here in Cairo. And during this Congress, a very young reporter from New York, Paul Wanda Jablonski, also came all the way, a very ingenious, very inquisitive reporter. She came over here and went to the Congress and met some friends, and she decided to persuade five gentlemen from different producing countries that we call our founder members, Iran, Iraq, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Venezuela. Five gentlemen. If I recall their names were Perez Alfonso from Venezuela, who was your counterpart, the minister from Venezuela came here. And uh, Fuad Rouhani from Iran was also a delegate. Atalat Shaibani from Iraq was also a delegate. Abdullah al Tariki from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was also a delegate here, and Ahmed Lawal from Kuwait. I don't know what attracted them to this young reporter called Wanda Jablonski from New York, but she was so persuasive, she invited them and told them that, look, you need to get together. This is an opportunity for you to discuss what you have in common. And Egypt is a wonderful country. You can move mountains from here. And then she decided to take them far outside of Cairo to a place called Al Mahdi. There's a yacht club there then, and the yacht club is still there now. They are celebrating, I understand, their centenary this year, 100 years. And it used to be outside of Cairo, now it's all built up. And she took them there and they met all of them strangers to each other. She brought them together. The rest is history. They signed at that meeting what they call a gentleman's agreement. A copy of that agreement is in the archives here in, uh, in Cairo. And we have a copy in Vienna in the Secretariat. And they decided that they should go back home since they didn't have mandate. They were simple servants of the state, civil servants. But they should go and talk to their governments, persuade their governments if they agreed to meet in any of the countries uh, to form an organization to protect their natural resources. And it took almost one year. There was no fax machine. There was no internet. Uh, there was no iPhone. And the telegrams took nearly one year 
to go around to tell them that, look, the government of Iraq agreed to invite them to Baghdad. And a year later, in September, on September the 14th, 1960, these five gentlemen again converged in Baghdad in a place called Al Sharp Hall in downtown Baghdad in the district called uh, Baghdad Muadam, which is still standing. And they formed this organization by passing this declaration uh, in Baghdad. Now, we have just received an invitation from the government of Iraq, which uh, we discussed uh, with my friends uh, Gabriel and uh, Chief Silva, if you like to call him, uh, that time has come for us to uh, go to Baghdad, to return to the cradle of civilization. We're moving from Omar Dunia in Mahdi, the Yacht Club, to the cradle of civilization in Baghdad, from the banks of the Nile River to the banks of the biblical uh, Euphrates and Tigris, where our organization was formed nearly 63 years ago to take stock of the journey so far, seven cycles in all and still counting in many turmoils. I know of no organization in history that its funeral rites have been celebrated several times and we rose from the ashes and continue to work stronger. And OPEC will continue to live. It's in the interest of both producers and consumers. My friend Joe McGonigal uh, from the IEF will testify to that. And it was Wanda Jablonski, this American girl reporter, who went, went back to New York. She said, and she wrote in her paper, that if nobody had established an organization like OPEC, the Americans probably would have created one. Correct, Joe? So, our friendship, our brotherhood, with your good self, has roots, strong roots. So, and we will continue this friendship, bringing this great country of civilizations closer and closer with our organization, which we helped to bring to life. And I want to, on behalf of all my colleagues, all our member countries of OPEC, and all my colleagues in the Secretariat, I thank you immensely for this generosity. I wish to dedicate this special present this historic present to OPEC. Whatever we were able to achieve in the last six years in the Office of Secretary General was due largely with the cooperation, with the unity, with the support, with the comradeship of all our member countries. And in particular, my colleagues in the Secretariat in Vienna, whom you will know very well, who oh, are always very fond of you, uh, Tariq. And uh, I wish you all the best. I wish you long life, good health, many, many years of service to the Arab Republic of Egypt, to the industry, uh, to OPEC. And please convey our deep gratitude to the indefatigable President Abdel Fattah al Sisi and the president of this great country, a citizen of the world, the champion of Africa, the champion of the poor. I say shukran to Shukran.